Uganda is a third world country, so the country may not entirely do without borrowing, but the question is, at what rate? While reading the national budget estimates on 12th June, Finance Minister Marai Chiwanuka tabled a report on the public debt, grants and guarantees for the financial year 2013-2014. Overall, Uganda's debt burden now stands at a whooping 17 trillion shillings. The huge debt burden dates back from 1980, but in 1996, Uganda's debts were waived by at least 82%, but this didn't change much as borrowing by the Ugandan government escalated. Again in 2006, international donors waived Uganda's debt, but this didn't help much since the borrowing continued at a high rate. Director of Programs at the Uganda Debt Network, Julius Kapwepwe, is concerned that even after different multinational institutions waived Uganda's debt, the level of indebtedness seems to be escalating. It is likely that after a certain time, T, even those countries that benefited from debt relief initiatives are likely to go back into the spiral. This year, Budget estimates show the total outstanding government domestic debt at 1.7 trillion shillings, while the external debt amounts to 7 trillion shillings. Under the Public Finance and Accountability Act 2003, Uganda should not exceed a certain ceiling of borrowing against the GDP. State Minister for Finance, Juchano might say Uganda is still within the international realm of borrowing against her GDP. Both domestic and foreign is within the acceptable range internationally yeah so it is being managed but opposition shadow minister of finance Geoffrey kanya argues that uganda's level of indebtedness is unsuitable yet many government programs to improve people's lives have not been implemented some of it we have not even implemented programs and we are paying commitment fee and surcharge the uganda debt network puts down the problem to corruption while some mps argue Government does not prioritize programs and where to spend. So government owes a lot of debt to service providers. And that itself stifles the private sector from growing. They can't have money for investment because it's being held by government. We have an extravagant government. Ugandans may not be aware that they are running two governments. You have, you have two cabinets. Our indebtedness means ordinary Ugandans are bound to suffer because government will not adequately provide social services like health care, education and infrastructure instead of focusing on debt servicing. Uh, that shows that our children, ourselves and our children, have a cost to pay. The junior finance minister and some Ugandans stress that if focus is put on infrastructure, it could stimulate other sectors that could boost the economic and social development. Man, people should not get worried about this because also countries like uh, US, countries like Germany, they also do borrowing. So as you're aware, Uganda is a third world country and I think, I think we are getting there. The, the quality of governance also determines, contributes significantly to the level of increased debt for Uganda. That whatever we are borrowing for is for development and particular development of infrastructure and then uh, something which is targeted towards uh, the education and welfare of the people. For a nation like Uganda that is still a third world state, this kind of debt is so huge for it. But as the finance minister stated, we're still in the international realm of the debt. But how far will Uganda go with this kind of debt and who shall pay at the long run? Maurice Ochoa, NTV.